cognitive things that were out of alignment with what that audience was looking for. And they were, we were quickly able to connect, relate, and boom, off we went. So guys, this is, and now we're doing with challenges. I'm not the, I'm not the everything marketing guy. I don't teach, I don't talk about podcasting. I don't talk about TikTok. I don't talk about Clubhouse. I don't talk about anything except what? Challenges. That's it. And you know what, you know what's nice about that? JLD never has to worry about promoting me to his audience. Because he knows I'm not next week going to be like, hey, Pedro, the podcast guy. If you want a podcast, come to me. <laughs> Even though that sounds way cooler than, you know, JLD, the podcast guy. But I'm not <laughs> going to try and be the podcast guy, am I, JLD? No. So you can promote me to your audience because he knows I'm all in. I'm staying in my lane. And he, he's the podcast guy. So when you niche down, your competition becomes your partners. Oh my gosh. Oh my word. All the people you think you're competing against. What if you didn't compete against them? What if, what if it made sense for them to promote you to their list, to their audience? Game changer. Why do you think people like JLD, Evan Pagan, Pete Vargas, um, John Acuff, Roland Frazier, Ryan Dice. Why are these other marketers who sell marketing training promoting me? Because you're the best. Because I'm the best at challenges and I'm not trying to do what they do. So now you get support from other industry leaders. And I'm telling you guys right now, I just don't know why so many people are resistant to this and they fight me on this. Even when I'm giving one-on-one -on -one coaching, this happened on Clubhouse the other day. Some guy and his wife came into the room. I, they got picked for a hot seat. I literally gave them the niche, the money niche. I mean, I handed them a million dollar plus business idea to a micro niche and they kept trying to bust out of it. And I'm like, guys, what are you doing? You're just messing up the gift I just gave you. So JLD, I don't know how much time I got you for. Um, first of all, guys, get JLD. Give me till the top of the hour, brother. Oh, sweet. Okay. I don't, okay. I also know that we got some friends. Um, They're here. Okay. Oh, my word. Beautiful. Yes. So JLD, any little last comments yeah, on this I conversation? Do. I'm sure you do. And then I want to bring up, I want to bring up some other real gangsters. Awesome. Awesome. I can't wait. This conversation is so important. I'm so glad with the passion that Pedro is bringing it to you. The one thing I want to add to this that is so true that you need to be thinking about as you're going through this is the higher the barrier, the lower the competition. The higher the barrier, the lower the competition. When you do something that is really, really difficult, when you do something that has a very high barrier, like I did, doing a seven-day-a-week podcast when nobody else was even willing to do a two-day-a-week podcast. They were just willing to do once a week, sit back on their laurels, and just coast. I came in and 100X'd their efforts, 100X their efforts, and did a daily podcast interviewing entrepreneurs. My barrier was so high that the competition wasn't just low. It didn't exist for years and years and years. So what can you do in the world that has such a high barrier in your micro niche that even if people wanted to copy you, they can't copy you because they can't put in the work. They can't put the barrier up that you have. But what we see instead, Pedro, we see all these people that start off and they, they do have these really good ideas, by the way, but they put these really low barriers out there. Their business is a low barrier. When what does that mean? That means all the competition can just jump over that low barrier, saturate that thing. And then all of a sudden everybody loses because it was a low barrier. It was easily easy, easy to replicate. You have to have a micro niche that is not easily replicated. And there's a lot of ways to be not easily replicated. But if you have something that's easily replicated, the world, once you start having success, the world will replicate it and then everybody loses. So you have to add that dimension to what you're doing in this world, micro niche and become the best. And then nobody wants to compete with you. Nobody's going to want to compete with Pedro. He has such a far lead. It'd be like me entering a marathon right now when Pedro's already at mile 25. Why would I do that? That is, that is insanity. 
how, what is it that you can do in this world that's going to get you to mile 25 before anybody else even enters the race? Yeah. I, I, I mean, this is teeing up so well for our next guests. Guys, I'm telling you, when you, when you guys just, here's my promise to you. Be all in this week. Learn these concepts, apply these concepts. How many of you would like to know? Just this, this is, this is, I'm just going all in already. How many of you guys would love to have the confidence? This is not arrogance. This is not pride. Please do not hear this as pride or arrogance. And don't mind my black thumb. I had a very heavy Iron Man statue fall on my thumb when I moved into my house. This is going to not be a good scenario. I'm about to lose this nail. So never mind that there. Um, how many of you, you want to take a picture of my black thumb? Is that what you're doing, JLD? You want a picture of that? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right. Um, how many of you would love to have the confidence and certainty to know that before you entered any market, before you launched any business, how many of you would like to have the certainty because you know your strategy is so on point that you are going to win that game before the game begins? Real talk. How many of you guys think that would feel freaking amazing? Guys, I'm going to enter another industry this year. And do you notice how they keep getting bigger and bigger? My first industry, I was a local financial guy. I was the number one guy in Vacaville, California. Woohoo! Big fish, small pond. But then I was, but that was my training wheel business. Then Hunter X, Hunter X, you know, big fish. Bigger pond, still pretty small, helping these charismatic, really crazy Christians make money online. And then didn't roll with that. And then all of a sudden, bam, challenges. Now I'm speaking to the entire marketing industry and entrepreneurship, becoming a bigger fish in a bigger pond. Guess what the next one's going to be? Way bigger pond. And I mean this with all humility because seven, eight years ago, I had failed so bad, I didn't want to live. Seven, eight years ago, I thought my life was worthless. I had no value for anybody, not my wife, not my kids. So if you ever hear me talking, you're like, God, Pedro is very prideful. No, understand, I'm just sharing this in humility. I believe this next market we're going to enter into, we are going to win so big and so fast. The people in this industry are going to like, they're going to not know what happened. How many of you guys would love to have that level up? Because you see the game and you understand this is like the matrix, man. This is like the cheat codes. This is like knowing and you can have it. This is, this is the wisdom that you want. You don't get this just superficially going from thing to thing. And I love this conversation, JLD. And the people I'm about to bring up are real deal Holy field. See, that's another saying that middle-aged people say. I guess I'm middle-aged because I'm See that all the time. <laughs> I literally do. Real if, you're like, if you're like 25, you're like, what the heck? Yeah. Don't worry about it. Holy Just what is it? holy field. He's, okay. So Holly, can you pin up my um the guests I'm bringing on? These are industry leaders, impact players who came into an industry, completely disrupted it. By quickly becoming the number one go-to brand, they are the business. They are the they are the movement maker, industry leaders that everyone in their niche has tried to copy and replicate. And just like JLD said, they can't. First of all, no one can replicate you and your experience. See, that's the thing. That's why I got to get you to get out of Saul's armor. Nobody can replicate the fact that I went through three years of hell, misery, depressed, beaten down. Like nobody can replicate that. Now, someone may have their own journey, but not my journey. But these guys here have just have been, they crush it. They're, they, are the, they're, they are the most knocked off. They are the most copied because they completely changed the game when they entered in. But just like JLD said, they have created a, 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 a system, a process, a mindset 
They set the bar. Here's a little tip. Set the bar so high. Other people are like, nah, I'm good. Not there's, worth easy, there's, easy, there's easier ways to make money. And these people exemplify that. So welcome to the Movement Maker backstage. Alex and Layla Hermosi. What's up, guys? Where are you guys at? Are you guys here somewhere? What's in going this? on? No, we're here. We're here. Boom. I hear you guys. Holly, Holly, can we get can we get him pinned up here? Boom. Holly, what's the yeah, deal? I'm, I'm uh, pinning them right now. Boom. There's one half of this party. Where's pinned. the other half? I feel pinned. Is Layla, is Layla, is Layla here, Alex? Yeah, she's here. here. She's right on it. Yep. Oh, she on another screen? Yes. Okay, Holly, can we? Can we yeah, can we, Le I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. If you could say something so that your video would pop with 911 people, it's really hard no, to find good. you. Yeah, Layla, I'm right Layla. here, Holly. If you can find me in the Zoom. <laughs> Perfect. You're at it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Boom. All right. Let me see all four of us. Can we do that, Holly? In the magic of it's done. Magic. Yeah. You should see him. I don't. I see you. Oh, because I'm talking. Right. Okay. Well, oh, I need a spotlight, not pen. All right. Well, let's let's start let's start the conversation here. So, Alex and Layla, um, so you guys are incredibly successful at what you do, but not everybody might know who you guys are because you guys are not up until now. You guys didn't care about the fame game. That may be changing soon, I think, for you guys. But up until now, you guys have been just crushing it in your industry. So can you guys give a backstory about who you guys are, what you guys have been up to, and how you guys completely took over one of the most fragmented, fragmented competitive spaces? So Alex and Layla, whoever wants to go first, take it I away. I'm going to talk in like two minutes. I'll just give an entire, <laughs> I'll talk fast. Um, what's going on, everyone? You guys pumped? I'm excited to see. Uh, I'm, I'm very pumped to be here. Very grateful. Um, yeah, as Pedro said, we, uh, we've definitely not been in the fame game. Our objective was to get rich, not famous. So maybe some that may relate to some of you guys. Um, and so I was a gym owner. Uh, so I heard the, the tail end of what Pedro was saying, where he had his, you know, tiny market. I was in Huntington Beach, California, which actually Pedro looks closer there now. Um, and, uh, I slept on the floor for the first nine months. Uh, and I just ended up using a different business model to make my gyms work. And then from there, I was able to open up a new location every six months off cash flow, um, just because I had a different way of acquiring customers. And so from there, I met smart people who were above me and they said, you know, uh, you should start teaching other people how you're doing this. You should help other gym owners do what you're doing rather than, you know, going from six locations to 10 and so on. And so I made that pivot and ended up selling those, uh, that chain to start uh, Gym Launch, which is the company that we own now. Um, and from there, we basically, uh, Layla and I then flew out for uh, a year and a half, two facilities in person um, and did gym turnarounds. So we turned around 33 facilities in 18 months um, taking over the front desk, re, re, repositioning the packages, te training their team on how to sell, um, getting the price points right, showing them how to market, getting new leads, doing everything end to end for them. And we'd do a new gym every single month. We'd fly out and we'd have, I had eight guys and every, every all eight of us would go to different facilities and re-meet and do that every month on the road for 24 days a month. We did that for almost two years. And then uh, from there, still, I had the same mentor who was like, no, I didn't really mean you should do it for other people like that. You should like teach people how to do it, not just like <laughs> do it for them like that. And so, uh, and so, so I got to listen, listen carefully to what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so then finally, uh, we started switching to a consulting model. Um, and that's when uh, things really uh, took off for us. And so um, that was in March of 17. Um, and since then, we've done 110 million in sales um, as a company. Wait, hold on. You meant, you meant 10 million, right? Right, 110 million in sales. Uh, right. <laughs> 10, 10, 10, you meant 10 million, right? Just like 10 and then just add 100. Um, <laughs> 110 million dollars. And as I can tell you right now, these are not BSers. That's not exaggerated. If anything, it's probably under. That's who these people are. These are not BS hypey marketers. I know these people well. These are friends of mine. I know their model. I know their numbers. We. We've hung out together. I've been in their home. They've been like, these are so like, I understand that's not like mar marketing math. That's not adding up all the people that owe them money for the next 85 years. Yeah, that's like straight. Like we have a hundred some employees, you know, we've been around for five years now and 
I think uh, something, I think John, that you said actually that relates is like the, the higher the barrier, the yeah. more success you'll have. I mean, totally. both Alex and I were in fitness for a long time prior to, and then Alex had his six gyms. I was a personal trainer before we started this. And so we had, you know, combined 20 something years of experience before. And then we went through two years of sleeping in motel eights, extended stays and sleeping on the floors and at his clients' houses to basically start what we have today. And so I think it's just, you know, people see what someone has today and it's like, just five and a half years ago, we were doing that. We were sleeping in motels. And so it's just, I think a lot of it, I think these events are great and what you're doing is great because it just is breaking people's beliefs because for me, that was what it took. Seeing other people who I listened to talk and I was like, honestly, they weren't that much smarter than me. They weren't that much more anything than me. And I was like, if they could do it, why couldn't I? You know what I mean? And if I can just add something, if right now any of you guys are going through a situation where you're like, man, I'm, I feel like I'm sleeping on the floor. I feel like I'm going through that miserable experience. Then it means you actually have the prerequisite for the story that's about to happen. Like almost every single one of us here have that story who's been there. And so if you are going through it, then it means you actually can check the box off and say like, wow, I'm actually, I'm checking a box on this path. Like I have to be here in order to guess where I want to go. And so I don't want you to take that as a, as something that would make you feel like you count out. It actually counts you in to the path of success. It's a necessary step. It's what gives you the credibility. It's what gives you the authority. So when you speak, people know there's something on your words. Guys, I talk about this a lot. There's a lot of people who just talk, 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 and they ain't saying nothing, man. And they even have like, even they're saying the right words, but it just feels hollow because they're an echo of someone else they're mimicking. They don't have the real experience. I could take a black belt. I can go to the gym in town, the jujitsu gym here in town. I could buy a gi and they can give me a black belt. I could walk around with the black belt. And I don't know one single thing about jujitsu other than I like to watch it on TV. So what Alex is saying is, is 100% the real, real. Layla, somebody said that you are uh, the best looking of the four of us. Um, wow, that didn't take a genius. So apparently, uh, <laughs> I mean, no arguments there. Um, so guys, I just, I have a couple questions. Um, I want to ask you guys, when did you know, when did you decide? Uh, so there was, it must have been a big shift between once you guys were, you were out there building gyms in real life, traveling around. Which guys think about this? Who's willing to do that? Like nobody, nobody else. I don't know of anyone. Is there anyone else in your all of all the copycats that I'm trying to follow? Have any of them been willing to pay that price? No, I actually talk about it when I try and get people to start their business. I'm like, just do what we did. Like go spend a year, work at front desks of a hundred facilities, and you'll know exact like you'll know it like the back of your hand. People are like, How do you speak with such you know certainty? right? It's like, well, if you've done something a hundred times, you outwork yourself out, right? Because it becomes something that's inevitable because you've observed it happen so many times. You can speak about it with certainty and not confidence. It's like, I know this is how it works. Like we've been doing it so long that there's no excitement. There's no emotion around it. Just, this is how it is. Yeah. And guys, I have some questions. Are you guys, do we have a hard stop at in, in 10 minutes? Or are you guys okay? No, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. I have a question. When did you know you were starting a movement? When did that occur to you? And when did you know that this was going to be big and you were going to change the entire industry? I, you should answer that. Well, there's two points I can think of. Um, one was there, there's two spots and one was in, when we were not in a good spot and one was where it was first starting, which was one was, I remember uh, for anyone who knows our story and those who don't, there was a point where we were starting the consulting model that we have today and we were getting away from flying people out. And all of the money in the bank account that we had, one of Alex's ex-partners took it all. And so we had essentially nothing. And we were in the parking lot of like Cheesecake Factory, I think. <laughs> and we were just like, this is the worst feeling ever. And I remember we started talking about it and we were like, man, like nobody is going to have this story. And I remember thinking, and I, we were talking about it. We we're like, we have to make it through this and we have to do something amazing because otherwise this just isn't worth it. Right. And I think that that was the point that we decided we're like, we're going to do whatever it takes to make this work. And then I think that when we realized that we had something was um, the moment when our first clients launched. And I think that a lot of people would dictate like, do you know if you're gonna have a movement based on like money and revenue and all that, but it was seeing the success our clients had in the first week of using our program. Um, and Alex, I don't know if you remember, it was like all of a sudden we had this Facebook group and we were sitting there like watching it, like having it pulled up on your screen. You're just like waiting for people to post. 
Um, and then they dinged in and it was just like made X amount of money, X amount of money, got this many clients, upsold this many clients. And we were like, holy crap, like they're able to do what we just did for the last few years. And we were like, it's working. And then the next week we had, without doing any marketing, like double the amount of clients come in as referrals. And it would just, and it just started stacking up and it was insane. And that was when I realized at least that there was something to it. It was like, this is either, and then you're always afraid. You're like, am I going to lose it in a week? Like, I don't know. Um, and so I think it took probably like a year and a half to realize it wasn't like a fluke and it wasn't all going to disappear tomorrow. But uh, there was a realization when we all came together in person. And I think we had about 700 gym owners in person. And I remember thinking like, I've been in the fitness industry for a long time. And there's not that many events where you could gather that many gym owners, let alone personal trainers. And I was like, wow, this is freaking cool. Yeah. I, so when I think one of the things I heard you say, Layla, and this happened to me too with Hunter X is it was probably two weeks old. It was probably two weeks from launch. Nobody knew what we were up to there. And I was like, this is going to be big. And you just kind of know, you kind of just know because you see the response. I think movement making is also about feeling. And I, for, I think a lot of the ladies, maybe are a little bit more in tune with their, how they feel in their bodies and stuff. But us guys have feelings sometimes too, like on Tuesdays and like every other Friday we have feelings. Um, man, you, f- you can feel this in your body. Like you can just feel how people are connecting with you, resonating with you. And you can see the testimonies. I call them miracles in the marketplace. Guys, these guys have miracles. Like, what do you mean? Did they raise the dead? Did they, well, essentially they have raised the dead. You know how many gym owners were dead? Businesses dead, life support, losing their lease behind on rent, not paying employees. Do you know how, how many would you think Literally, you guys, I just literally I didn't even, like you guys literally have brought gyms back from the dead. I, I don't even know how many probably suicidal entrepreneurs you've saved because when you are up against the back of the wall, sometimes that starts to look attractive. Like how many businesses do you know for a fact that you guys literally, because not in against, not that you're the savior, they did the work. However, they didn't know what the hell to do until you guys came along. How many do you think you guys have literally like just completely saved from bankruptcy and utter failure? Well, 30% of the gyms that we work with aren't making a profit, period. So they're either in the negative or they're zero. So they're working, like if you can imagine, 40 hours a week or more realistically, 60 hours a week to not make an income. That is the, the best case of that 30%. And then below that, they're working that same amount of hours only to have their bank account go down each month. Wow. Yeah. So good. So good. Okay, guys. Hey, Pete, can I jump in with a quick question for yeah. these? I mean, oh, why am I asking all the questions? We got JLD, the freaking podcaster interview. Dude, help me, bro. Jump in here. (laughs) Here's like the one sentence that, like, if I could just, you know, like have people imprint across their forehead. So every time they look in the mirror, they see it. It is, you need to become the best solution to a real problem in this world. Like, I believe in that sentence fully. And I, I've seen people that become the number one best solution to a real problem that they can and want to solve win. And people who, who become the second best solution to infinity, they lose. This is why this micro niche topic is so key, so important. So I'd love to ask the two of you, you know, specifically with what you've been experiencing over these years, what would be your one sentence? If you could just give this sentence writing backwards on someone's forehead. They're going to see every morning they look in the mirror. So they just don't forget because people forget. What is that? JLD is reading my notes. My question number was, what is the biggest problem you were and are solving for your ideal customers? Yeah, but I I worded it so much better. You did, (laughs) but I couldn't let you just take my question without trying to get it. Layla, Uh, what's the biggest problem you solve for your ideal customer? The biggest problem we solve for our ideal customer. Um, okay, well, wait, because I was going to answer his question. Yeah, same? my question is better. So I'll answer. Um, I'll right. answer Pedro's after she answers. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Layla. Okay. Um, Alex actually said it earlier, but it's something that I said to myself a lot in the beginning, um, and it was something I said at one of our events that just kind of came out, and it was outwork your self doubt. And the reason I say that is because, like, I just I feel 
a lot for everyone in this audience because before we started the business and everyone sees us and they're like, oh, how'd you do that? How'd you do that? And I was like, I was a personal trainer with no management experience. I knew nothing about business, like literally zero. I just met Alex and he was like, I have this idea. And I was like, let's and we start doing it together. And it was just like belief. And so I think the only way that we were able to get where we were able to get, because I kept thinking to myself, like, I don't want to be the reason that we can't succeed, right? Because like, don't want to, you know, show Alex he picked the wrong partner or something like that. <laughs> um, was like, I just have to outwork my self-doubt. It's like, I have, there are people that have done more that are no smarter than me or have no more privilege than me. So I should be able to do it as well. And I think that that's just always been my North Star, which is just like any, if I am willing to put the work in, I'm willing to pay the dues, right? Then there's no reason I can't have it as well. Um, because that means that I've earned it at that point. And so that's what I've always stuck with. And that's the, the thing that I that always sticks in the back of my head is that usually, I think that a lot of times we fool ourselves and we think that, well, I'm working just as hard as that person. I just don't have the outcome. And it's like, actually, they're probably doing something else that you don't realize or you're not aware of. And that's why you don't have the outcome. Or more than likely, you are lying to yourself about the amount of work you're putting in. Because a lot of people have to stretch their capacity, their emotional capacity, their mental capacity, and their physical capacity to work in order to achieve a goal. So it feels very painful at first. And I know that for the first, especially two years of doing it, I was in pain. And people are like, you guys are killing it. It's insane, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I feel like shit most of the time because it was so hard growing so quickly. As a person, you have to evolve as a person to keep up with the business. If you don't want a bottleneck, like you have to continue to do that. And by doing that, you have to work on your mind, you have to work on your spirit, your body, et cetera, and your relationships. And so I think that that's what I would say is just outwork your self-doubt. I think that most people believe that they are doing enough, but if you do not have a result, then you are not. Outwork your self-doubt. I mean, I really hope people are just imprinting this on their minds because you're looking at four very successful people right here. We are human beings. We have self-doubt. That is part of being a human being. So for the other 890 plus people that are here that are also having self-doubt from day to day, week to week, month to month, like welcome to being a human being. That is part of what it is to be a human. We're doing that. And if I had, again, done one episode a, a week, my self-doubt would have won because I would have sat around on, on my booty for six days just being like, oh my God, that was a bad episode. And it was a bad episode because I wasn't good at what I did, but I did it every single day. I was too busy. I was outworking my own self-doubt because I was too busy to even look backwards. I could only look forward. So who else is willing to outwork their self-doubt? So I love that. I'm so glad that you answered JLD's question first. Me too. Dustin also commented, he's like, JLD's question was so much better and like 15 other people agreed. <laughs> yeah, but mine's a good question too, but yours was amazing. And and guys, I should have warned you guys. Like, you know, I have Pedro, then I have Gangster P. Oh no. Well, they're, it, they're just as Gangster Layla. She doesn't have an other version. It's just <laughs> always on. Yeah, Layla. This is what you get. And that's what I love about this. Alex is like the more chill, like, you know, just... Layla is bringing the mindset all the time. Mm. Guys, you got to follow them on social because like, you just see what I'm talking about. It's just got relentless. Him. There's a mindset that there's a mindset that Alex and Layla have. It's, it's just relentless. It just like, doesn't matter. Like we'll, and some people are like, ah, is it all about working hard? Listen, um, I like to work. Uh, it's not all about working hard, of course, strategy. But when you have the right strategy, you know what you should do? You should work really hard with the right strategy. <laughs> like, I've done 47 challenges in a row, nonstop. No one's done more. Do you guys see the pattern? JLD, podcast every day. These guys flying around the country, sleeping on freaking rat-infested motels, right? Guys, at Super 8's, not the best place. A lot of crack, a lot of prostitutes, just saying. Not the best places to stay. Don't recommend it. These guys did the reps. 47 challenges in a row. You see the trend. You guys see the trend. But Alex... Would you, would you mind answering my question? I thought it was a pretty good question, which was for the people here in this room, a little practical, what, what did you guys see was the problem? And also the follow-up is how did you, how did you take a stand for them? So the number, so there are three problems that, that gym owners face. So I'm going to be this, Layla give you the, the really the heart answer. And I will give you the head answer, which is, yeah. um, Gym owners don't know how to, and this is really goes for most business owners, don't know how to customer, acquire customers, right? At a profit specifically. Um, once they did have customers, they would reach capacity before they were profitable, which means their model was broken. So they didn't even know that their model was broken because they didn't even know how to get customers anyway. So it wasn't even an issue. But once we fixed their problem of acquisition, they realized their gym was full, but their bank account was empty. And they were like, oh my, something's broken here, right? And so we had to fix the model. And then finally, once we fixed the model, 
the thing is, is okay, now we're, we're getting people in the door, we're making money, but some people are leaving, right? So it's how do we keep these people for life? Right. And so those are the three fundamental issues that all business owners face. And specifically within gyms, we help them acquire customers at a profit so they don't need a marketing budget. Right. So that they are more than break even day one, meaning that when someone walks in the door, they they take the money out of their wallet and they pay for the next customer behind them. So the only thing that that gym owner or that business owner has to do is get the first one. They get the first one in. They can get the rest of the customers for life if they use the process that we teach them. Right. That's the first one. The second one, like I said, is we fix the math. It's a little bit of math. but It's not hard stuff. It's just like, hey, carry the two. Like, <laughs> let's let's reorganize our class times. Let's make sure that we're not doing 10 people per session. We can do 15. Let's take 45 minute sessions instead of 60. Like little things like that. But, you know, we, we say uh, in our world, small hinges open big doors, right? And so, you know, for example, if we switch someone to billing to on a 28 day billing cycle instead of a, a monthly cycle, that gives us 13 billion cycles a year in a very small margin industry where the average gym owner makes 12 and a half percent net margin that increases their net margin from 12 and a half to eight uh, to 20, right? We almost double their profit simply by changing the way that they're billing, right? And so there's a hundred more things like that that we'll do with a gym, but it's just knowing, kind of having that in-depth knowledge that you can't really, no one can, no one can know that without having been in the trenches, right? And being exposed to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of scenarios. Like Pedro can say, I'll show you what happens when you when you botch the, the ads, I'll show you what happens when you, when you botch your offer, I'll show you what happens when your zoom doesn't work or when somebody just can't get their mic to work. And they're like the main event because every single one of these scenarios has happened to him. And so that when it happens again, people are like, how is he so cool under pressure? Because he's already seen this a hundred times. And so again, people are like, he's so confident. It's like, he's has done this. <laughs> I caught myself. He has done this a lot of times. It's not his first rodeo. Guys, so good, man, oh. guys, first of all, First of all, JLD, are you okay on time, bro? I know you got like- I, I do get a bounce. Um, okay. Well, then I'll, let me let me let you say a little parting. parting. I, I'm, I'm going to jam for another 15, 10, 15 minutes. If, cool. If, if Hermosis can hang. You guys I, get for another 10? I will, I will part with something that um, <clears throat> you know might make some people glad that I'm leaving, to be honest, because I'm, I'm going to be truthful and I'm going to be blunt with people right now. And, you know, I hearken back to the days I was an officer in the U.S. Army. And, you know, sometimes if you don't tell us straight, people get killed. Like that is a reality of the world that I lived in as an officer in the army for eight years. And in this case, if you don't tell us straight, sometimes people just never find success. And so I want to tell you what I struggled with back in 2012, launching my podcast was I hid behind this word called perfectionism. I said, you know what? My podcast isn't quite perfect yet. I'm not going to launch it until next week. And it'll be perfect then. I'm just a perfectionist. So I'm going to wait until next month until my website's perfect and my social media is perfect and my emails are perfect. I'm just a perfectionist though, you know, which is kind of like, you know, a little like humble brag, so to speak. I'm a perfectionist. Everybody loves to use that word when they're starting off because it's a humble brag and it's such a lie. What you need to do is replace the word perfection and replace the word perfectionism with the word coward. You are not a perfectionist. You are not trying to be perfect. You are being a coward. And I'm speaking as a former coward. I was a coward trying to perfect my podcast launch. I was a coward pushing the dates back until I launched my voice, my message, my mission to the world. And I see it a thousand times a year when people join Podcasters Paradise to learn how to create, grow, and monetize their podcast, they delay, they delay, they delay, and then many of them just pod fade away before they even launch because they use the word perfectionism when they should be saying coward. And it's okay to be a coward. It's okay to be fearful and have doubts because you're a human being. This is back to outworking yourself doubt. You're a human being. You're going to have these emotions. You're going to be a coward. You're going to be fearful. You're going to have doubts. You've got to outwork that fear, outwork that cowardice and get it out to the world and continue to do it every single day. So I am so glad that I get to hang out with Pedro over the next week to do these. We're going to be in person, by the way, with, with Tony Robbins in a couple of days doing these live. Maybe we'll even get a Tony Robbins sighting. You might, you know, so definitely stick around because we're going to be with him at his place in Palm Beach for a uh, a 10 person mastermind retreat. So stick around guys and keep coming to these. They're going to be amazing. Billy Jean, Hal Elrod, another, uh, other amazing people that are coming. I'm so flipping stoked that everybody here is getting this book because this book is going to be something that you're going to be able to refer to every time you have that self doubt along with all the genius that Pedro and other people are sharing as well. The book goes live tomorrow. So if you have a loved one, consider right now going and ordering 
this book for your loved one, you already have the gift because you are VIP, but this could be a gift for a loved one right now. This book goes live tomorrow. It will ship today. So Pedro, I love you, brother. I'm looking forward to spending the next week with you. A few of those days, four of those days in person. I know. It's going to so be a lot. And, and in case you're wondering, I think we're going to have to do at least one of those days, no shirt. I, got a, <laughs> I saw a lot of no shirt requests. I'll, they they yeah. were all lying though. None of us, none of them want to see us. With My no wife shirt. says nobody requested that. Okay. <laughs> I believe, now I believe your wife. <laughs> see, keep The wives keep you in check, bro. I know yours must. Okay. Layla, right, Alex, we'll, great hanging we'll, out with we'll you. We'll let you go, man. We'll let you go. Listen. Thanks, John. The um, for can I just piggyback real quick off what John said? Now, see, perfectionism. That's what that's what a lot of people say. But the us Christian folk, you know what we say? Oh gosh, Pedro, I have a spirit of excellence on my life. Everything I do must be excellent. Well. I would have you consider what John maybe said. I'm not going to call you a coward because, you know, Gangster P is not here today. But John, you may want to try that one on because the fear of making mistakes, the fear of looking bad, the fear of all that stuff is why we move into these spirits of excellence, excuses. Now, do I believe in excellence? Sure. Guys, this challenge we're running right now is the gold standard for challenges in the industry. If you know how much prep and stuff happening, do you think my first one was like this? My first one had, I wasn't even sending emails on my first, I didn't even notice send emails. I didn't like, oh my, like, oh duh, I should be sending them emails. Guys, so like, just understand that like that, we, we have to stop saying this dumb stuff and line ourselves like Layla said. So last few questions. Pedro, can I piggyback real quick just to give Please, uh, the audience some real examples? So um, for perspective, you know, 110 million, our second year, we did 28 million in revenue. And I'm only bringing that up to juxtapose against what I'm saying, which is we didn't send emails until our third year in business, which was the year after that. We didn't have a website until we crossed 30 million per year in revenue. We didn't have a website. We didn't have a website. It literally, like, hey, what's your like, website? I'm like, I don't have one. It hurt my so, like, soul. <laughs> They're like, how do I get in contact with you? I was like, click a link somewhere. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I was like, hop on the phone with the sales guy. I don't <laughs> um, so I just say that to say like, you what you probably have is more than you need. Yes. Yep. Guys, you guys know, I didn't even have a logo. We were doing, oh, we were, we were over seven figures before I actually got a real logo. I used, I made my logo in ClickFunnels with some, with some ghetto fonts. Dude, 99 like designs, this. 99 designs, five bucks for the- I didn't even, ha I didn't even have that back then. So <laughs> listen, guys, last few questions. So I want to, um, what is the best part of having a movement-based business? Or in your case, you know, slash, because you, I'm not sure if you guys identify with that way, but or, and or having, being an industry leading transformer. Like what's the best part about being the number one go to clearly in your space? What's the best part about it? Both financially as well like, as I emotionally. Tell you, I was like, I tell you a hundred of the worst things about it. <laughs> well, that's the next question though. That's the next question. So I got to get, you got to tell me the, okay, well, let's start with, okay. You want to start with the bad stuff first? Okay, let's start with the bad stuff first. What's the worst part about having the number one business and disrupting an entire industry? So the worst part and the best part is that, you know, just like you were saying, um, whenever you innovate, because if you're the leader, you're forced to innovate, right? If you are not the leader, then you're inherently by definition, you're following, right? And so if you're the first one in, you're the one who also has to bear all the costs of innovation, which means I have to try out 10 things to find out nine of them don't work. And I have to bear that cost. Everyone else just oh, says, oh, that's what they say is working right now. I'll just do that. But the advantage, so I guess I'm answering both questions at the same time, is that Perfect. they won't know why that one out of 10 worked. And so my, my depth of knowledge is deeper. And that is why when they try to apply the knowledge that they didn't earn or forge, they fall short or they fall flat. And so because of that, they inherently can never surpass us because they need us and we do not need them, right? And so I think the, <laughs> and the win, <laughs> and so- I'm Talking the, dirty, talking dirty, I love <laughs> I'm getting, it. I'm getting gangster Pete uh, aroused. Um, <laughs> and so, um, so that's the good and the bad, right? The good is that you lead the way we can pr charge premiums for our products because they are the, they are the newest and they're the cutting edge. And that's the stuff that is working right now before it gets watered down and diluted by the remainder of the people in the space. 
And so we can charge a premium because, and because of that, we have higher profits for perspective. You know, we ran 50% or higher net margins on our business this entire time, right? Which is, which is very, very high, right? Especially compared to this industry. And so we're doing that because when people got a program from us, it was like taking a winning scratch off ticket that they already knew was a winner. And all they had to do was cash it in. They didn't have to try 10, they didn't have to scratch 10 tickets to find the one winner. We'd already scratched a hundred and said, this is the one for you. And they could just uh, deploy it. So that's the, 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 the good part is that, you know, we have that, that benefit of being the premium. Um, we also, if, you, if you're around long enough, um, you become a more household name. There's fewer questions of legitimacy. Um, but if I can just speak this into everybody else here, right now, 90% of the people that we get on the phone with, we've been doing this for five years. We've done over hundred million in revenue. We've sold 4,000 gyms in a space that only has, you know, hundred thousand. Despite that, 90% of the gyms we get on the phone with have never heard of our company today. And so if anyone here is like, well, it must be easy for you because they've heard of you. Our sales, no one knows who we are. They assume on the call that no one, ex no one knows who we are. So I'm just saying that if you're like, if you're telling yourself that story, you just need to get over it because it's just not true and it's never going to go away. And this proves how much bigger niches are than you think they are. You know what? Go ahead, Lana. Yeah, I, I think it's like even like a tangible example of expanding a niche, right? I think a lot of people, the reason that they think that niches are so limited is because they actually don't know how businesses truly expand. And so I can think of a million ways that we can grow our business, right? One, we can take everything we have and we can duplicate it in Japan. We can duplicate it in Brazil. We can buy uh, lower end or you know, industry leaders of kind of sub niches, say personal training, yoga, bar, because we have the capital to do so because we're the industry leader of the, the entire niche, right? And that's, that's just like, you do that and we could probably triple the business in the next few years. And so I think it's, most people don't think about those things. They're just like, well, I need more customers of this customer. It seems very limiting when you're thinking that way, but not when you think of the different ways you can expand. And Layla, I'll be very transparent. I didn't know that either. I just stumbled into this. And then I was like, I thought this was this teeny tiny little micro niche. I'm like, well, I'm not sure how big this can ever be. And then it's kind of like this, it's kind of like this. Imagine there's like this wall that's full of ivy and there's this like little door, like a little door that maybe like a tiny little door. This is big wall, this door. And you can't see what's on the other side of the wall. But, and you have to like get down on the floor, really trying to shrink your body to go through this really small little door. But once you just, just barely make it to this teeny tiny little door on the other side, is everything. And you're like, oh my word. Like, I would have never thought there was this much opportunity on the other side of this teeniest, tiniest door. Yeah. And I'm yeah. telling you guys right now, every single one of us that have done this, know this. We want you to have this gift. We want you to have this life where literally like there's endless opportunity because we apply the constraint early. Now we have lots of options. And uh, so for you, Layla, I know people, I want, I want to hear your perspective. Best and worst thing for you being the number one go-to. Because you guys have been knocked off a ton. You guys have had people steal from you, employees. Like you guys have been through some stuff that's not really cool and fair. And you guys, we're, we're all human beings and we have feelings. So like talk about from your perspective, maybe more of the heart side of it, the best and worst of being the number one. I think that the best and worst are kind of tied to the same thing, which is the responsibility. Um, I think that feeling the weight on your shoulders and what that means is that you get to be number one because you bear the weight, but most people cannot keep it much longer than just a few minutes. You know, that people get complacent when they get success, they get comfortable, you know, you get your first win and, and you don't keep pushing yourself. And I think that what most people don't realize is that you have to continue to push yourself. And not only that, but people push on you, your clients push on you, the industry pushes on you, your employees push on you. And if you don't expand yourself, then they don't expand. And so there's a lot of pressure. And that is probably what I struggle with the most is just the amount of pressure that's constantly on. And how can you, when I said outwork yourself out, I didn't even just mean like outwork, like the numbers in the day, I meant like mentally outwork yourself out. You need to work on your mind share. And so I think that for both of us, Alex and I, we work a lot, you know, with people that help us 
expand and improve our mindset because I don't think that you can do it without doing that. I think I've had to greatly expand my emotional capacity um, and the way I look at people and my understanding of psychology to get to where we are today and not self-sabotage. Um, and I think a lot of people, you know, they get to be successful and then they're like, I don't want to keep going. I think I'm just scared of success. And I'm like, you're not scared of success. You're just scared of the work it's going to take. And you're fearful that you can't do the next thing to get to the next level. And I think, you know, we all have that fear and that's okay, but I recognize that. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I just never want that to be me. Um, and so I think that that's probably the hardest part because with that comes expectation and judgment. And so you really have to be focused on, am I being the person I want to be? Am I authentic to myself? Am I living by my values? And I'm am I fulfilling the destiny that I know I'm supposed to be on, right? Am I on the right path? And you have to ignore what everybody else is saying, even your closest people around you, because I think that they all have an opinion about you, especially when you're number one. You see it on forums online, you get your DMs, Alex sees on all the ads, um, and you just have to ignore it. You have to listen to yourself because there's so much noise on the outside. So I think that that's, it's the greatest thing because you can help change other people's lives more than anybody else. You can help change your clients' lives. You can help change your team's lives, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, but the heart, that is also the hardest part because you, if you stagnate, they stagnate, right? And they can't get what they came there for, which is they usually follow you for growth and innovation and staying on the edge of things. I want to repeat something that just got slipped in there. You can help more people being number one. Let me say it again. You're going to get to help more. I literally have goosebumps over my entire body right now. You can help more people being number one. So if you're just this humble, you know, this happens a lot with my more spiritual people who are just, you know, humble and oh, Pedro, I'm just humble and I want to be humble. Listen, of course, I'm not saying don't be humble. Humility does not mean timidity. Humility does not mean thinking of yourself less, uh, be smaller. Humility doesn't mean that at all. It takes great humility to actually pay the price to be number one and take the shots and not make it all about you. It takes great humility to get to the top and stay on top. But if you really care about making a massive impact, if you really are about serving people at scale, I'm going to encourage you, adopt this idea of being number one. You know what I have to say? Is that when you said that, I was like, that's what I used to be like. And uh, when I met Alex is when he broke that belief for me, because I was just like, I just want to help people. And I remember he said, he was like, wouldn't you help more people if you made more money? <laughs> and it was just like, he had to say it to me for me to be like, yeah, you're right. And that was, uh, it's just a concept I don't think people understand because if you don't have, if you're not number one, you don't have the profits to reinvest in research and development to stay number one, to keep helping all of your clients so that they can also become number one. Yeah. So good. All right, guys, last question. Now, some of you guys are doing the math. Okay. And I, I know I can see your brains thinking some of you guys are doing the math because Alex has dropped two very gangster numbers. He dropped one number of 110 million in revenue. Then he snuck in a little other number that said they've been able to maintain a 50% profit margin the entire time. So if you're halfway decent at math, you can do 50% profits on 110 million is $55 million. So you're probably thinking, well, of course, Alex and Layla also live in Puerto Rico to not pay. And that's another story. See, <laughs> that's another story. That's a good story. That's a good, actually, that's how we met. We met, at, I think, at a gym. We were, here's how we met. And so the power of being in masterminds, we were, we met because we were both at the inner circle mastermind with Russell. And then of course I went to the gym to do what I normally do, which is talk on the phone. Alex and Layla went to the gym to do what they normally do, which is work really hard. That's why they look like that. <laughs> and I look like this. And then I brought up Puerto Rico. They're like, bro, don't talk about Puerto Rico. Like, and I was like, oh my God. And so like, we're not gonna talk about Puerto Rico. They live in Austin, Texas. They're very happy there. They have a nice home even though they just recently had the most craziest snowstorm in the history of Texas. But um, that's a funny story from the day. Last question. And of course, as the challenge guy, we're here talking about crush it with challenges. Every single one of these people was going to be offered the opportunity to join us in our crush it with challenges training later in the week. You guys know a few things about challenges, huh guys? Right. A little bit. What's your yeah. challenge story? <laughs> I think Alex is like the OG challenge maker. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so we um so we started it's funny because pedro was like hey i've got this gym on her she's doing a, a clever challenge you see what she's doing and i was like she's doing my challenge <laughs> um so this is probably 2013 2012 um i was in a in a trainer trainer slash gym owner mastermind i was i mind you i actually joined a mastermind in the fitness industry before i had a gym and i did that because i figured it'd be a lot easier to learn from everyone else's mistakes before i started than to try and fix something that was broken and so um Smart. anyways i started i started with this mastermind and they said you know what's working what's not working the guy named danny said you know i had this client who came up to me and he uh he, he said how about he's like money doesn't motivate me what if i um what if i pay you and then if I hit my goal, you give me my money back and but you can use all my pictures for promoting your business. And he was like, and he got amazing results and other people started asking about the program. And so all these people have been signing up for this thing, right? Um, but I'm still trying to figure it out. And so um, we took this idea and then we put marketing and sales behind it and a better monetization structure um, and created what, you know, within the industry, 10,000 plus gyms have done. It's created over a billion and a half in revenue um, just using this concept, which was a free six week challenge. And so the way it worked was people would put, you know, $600 down. They would have six weeks to lose, you know, 20 pounds or 5% of their body fat. And then at the end of the six weeks, if they, if they had hit the goal, the way that we did it was you could use hundred percent of that money towards staying at the facility. So you could keep the weight off and continue on your, on your fitness journey. Um, and so with that, what ended up happening is that people would basically pay to get onboarded, right? You know, if you have six weeks to onboard someone, you can choreograph a beautiful client experience, give them overwhelming support rather than the reverse model, which is give away everything for free, have people who don't care about you, don't show up to workouts, don't get results, don't value you as a business, you lose money in the acquisition, you lose money, and you can't really even spend any, any money to give them an amazing experience, right? And so all the, stick, the chips were stacked against you. And ultimately, this was why the gyms that I had were really successful, was that rather than doing what everyone else was doing, which was giving away free months and doing things like that and trying to get people into low memberships, I was like, let's, let's get people amazing results, let's get them super invested, and let's say that we're invested along with you. Right? We're going to say, hey, we want you to hit the goal. I want you to hit the goal because, you know, Kim, if you lose, if you lose 22 pounds, six, I was like, what are you going to do? I was like, are you going to want to stay? She's like, yeah. And I was like, then I'm, I'm with you on this. Right. And so what ended up happening is that I, I aligned our, our goals. They were more invested. And as financially, which made them more invested emotionally, I now had $600 that I could, I could pay to have a one-on-one -on -one coach text them every day before and after their workout. I could make them custom nutrition plans. I could meet with them individually two other times just to, to tweak their nutrition, to make sure that they had a grocery list, an eating out guide, a, a way to prep their food, everything that they would possibly need, a grocery service to deliver the stuff that they needed. So everyone was taken care of. Um, and so they could get the goal. And when they had that experience, they're like, why would I go anywhere else? And so what that did was it got more customers at a higher price that stayed longer. And so that was ultimately the, the problem that we ended up solving for these facilities. And we did it through this vehicle. And so, um, you know, obviously we're familiar with the challenge world. And uh, we just had it within our sub niche. They kind of work, right? A little bit. Yeah, they kind of kind of work. <laughs> Guys, think about this: six week weight loss challenge. You pay the five hundred, six hundred dollars. If you lose the weight, they some gyms give you your money back, or let you put it towards staying on board. Now, for that, what do you gotta do? You gotta show up. You gotta you gotta show up five days, six days a week. What do you gotta do? You gotta check in at the gym. So every day, check in. You got to post before and after pictures. You got like, so they're making you basically, they're you're paying money to market their business. It was great. <laughs> and, they, and it's great because they're like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to be the, I'm going to go get my money back. Great. Why not incentivize people to get in the best shape of their life and lose 20 pounds. And here, here's your money back. I'm because it's all good. Now, Alex is right. Some people take the money back. Great. Most will just roll it into the next challenge, the next thing, the staying on board. Guys, this challenge model that he just talked about completely revolutionized and launched a whole new industry where basically you didn't have to be Gold's Gym, 24-hour fitness. Like you could actually be a profitable individual, small business gym owner running this model. Change the game, guys. Change the industry. You're like a billion dollars of revenue. So guys, yeah, for, for, yeah. So go ahead. Yeah. So if you're like, oh, Pedro, a challenge won't work for me because I'm just a, that thought 
is the most expensive thought to have in your life right now. Kill that thought and say a challenge will work for me, can work for me, or how could a challenge work for me as a, because there is a way with creativity and innovation to apply this like it just seems like miracles it seems like a magic. it's not magic this is because it was it's built with so much of how human beings were wired to live and communicate it's why this stuff works so powerfully um that when you can figure out a way to contextualize this challenge model and message and movement messaging to your niche to your business and if nobody else is you're going to soon win and win big and so guys i just want to say this. I actually love you guys so much. You guys know that I was fair. I don't have a lot of people I respect. Um, and I just respect you guys a freaking ton. You guys know that I love when we get to just hang out and chop it up and compare some notes. Um, guys, these guys are the real deal. These are, I, I just couldn't say enough things about them. I'm so glad you guys might made time to come join us in this challenge. So Layla, Final words. What would you like to close us out tonight? You know, and usually it's ladies first, but now we're going to let the lady close it up. Final words for our time today. I would just say, you know, if you're feeling scared, anxious, confused, lost, like your stuff's not good enough, like it's not ready, just like if you're wondering if everyone who's successful does not have those feelings, that is completely incorrect. Um, and they continue as you are successful. They never stop. You just get better at learning how to respond to them. And so I think that if you can just remember that and not let it delay you from taking action, your feelings aren't necessarily something you should always listen to when you were putting yourself in a situation that's scary because it's just instinctual. Like you're just going to feel bad. Um, and so I would just say, ignore those. Uh, and remember uh, kind of with what John said, I think progression, not perfection. Um, because most people lie to themselves and say things aren't good enough, but it's like, it's not, even if it's perfect for me, it's not perfect for you, Pedro, or for Alex. And so it would be completely different to each of us and it will be for your clients. And the only way you're going to find out what works is if you give it to someone and they pay money for it. That's it. So I would say, just take action. Even if you feel like everything your body's telling you not to, you just need to do the opposite. You need to retrain yourself. And the best way to do that is with other people who are also doing the exact same thing, right? That's the biggest, that's the biggest way to win in this game of entrepreneurship. You guys, this is a lonely, this is a lonely business. If you try and do this alone, you're going to lose because when you're left to your own thoughts, I can predict what's going to happen. They're not, those thoughts are probably not amping you up. Those thoughts are probably not taking in the right direction. So <laughs> having this community of like-minded people staying in the crush it crew, and doing this together as a family, that's how it's going to work, guys. So Alex and Layla, dude, my word, you guys, so much value today as I knew this would be. All right, VIPers, can we drop some love in the chat for Alex and Layla? Can you guys make sure you follow them on social? If you are, if um, if large muscles uh, offend you, don't follow Alex. <laughs> If you are, if you are, if, if you are allergic to incredibly big calves, do not follow Alex. <laughs> um, but, uh, but Layla's great. No, I'm just kidding. Follow both these guys. <laughs> follow both these guys. <laughs> follow both these guys. They're freaking incredible people. Amazing entrepreneurs. Some of the best people I know. Now, real talk. I made a pretty bold promise about backstage. I said, buy the backstage pass invest $95. And if you do not, if you do not feel you got $95 value from just the first call, I will be, I will happily refund you. Can I just get a little quick glimpse? Is there any, can, how many of you guys are like, Oh my God, I got way more than $95 of value today in the first half hour, much less the first 90 minutes of this call. Okay. Just put it in the chat, put it in the chat. And here's my, here's my only ask. First of all, do the homework, but here's what I'd love you to do. How many of you guys know that there are people in this challenge that are not in VIP and that should be here? Can you just help the other people out that just maybe, you know what, look, maybe they saw my ad while they were going to the bathroom. It happens. Sometimes I'm going to the bathroom and I'm scrolling on Facebook. I don't know. Maybe I'm just the only guy that does that. I know that's kind of 
some of the girls, you guys, that's gross. I know guys are a little bit different, right? So sometimes, or maybe you're like in a bad spot and you saw my ad, you didn't have the credit card. So some people will just saw my ad at the wrong time. Other people maybe just didn't have the foresight and wisdom that, that you guys have, or a lot of them just don't even know who I am. They're like, I'm not going to give this guy 95 bucks. I don't even know who he is. Can you do them a big favor and go live in the Facebook group and just tell them how freaking amazing this backstage pass was already on day one and why they should probably join us? Who, who, who's, who's willing to just help a brother out and do that and really help them out? Okay. All right. I'm seeing all your hands. We're taking notes. I have all this. No, I'm just kidding. All right, guys. Love you guys so much. This concludes day one. VIP backstage. Much love to JLD from Puerto Rico. Much love to Alex and Layla from Austin. Man, look, we had the West Coast, Central, and the East Coast. Let's go. All right, guys. Love you guys so much. We're back live tomorrow, 9 a.m. Let's crush it. Bye, guys.